Well, my friends, two powerful stories of miraculous healings. Let's put ourselves for a moment in the place of these families. In one, we have a woman who's been suffering, not for a few weeks or a few months, but for 12 years, looking for a cure for um, her ailment. And she's gone from doctor after doctor, hoping that maybe this time we'll figure this out. And after spending all of her resources on doctors for 12 years, she's only gotten worse. Some of you know what it's like to have problems like that, health concerns that we just can't figure out what's going on. 12 long years hoping, praying for something to happen. And then this parent. Surely in sheer desperation, Jesus, do something. I'm going to lose my child. The thing that he holds more dear than anything else in life is almost gone. And in desperation, he's asking Jesus to do something. And in these stories, we find out that nothing is impossible for God. In these stories, Jesus, in fact, is able to heal. Incredible miracles that cause great celebration. Incredible stories. And yet at the same time, at least for me, these stories raise questions. They raise questions about how this works. How exactly do miracles happen? And how does God choose when and who and why and how? Questions. Now, undoubtedly, these stories are shared with us to also answer some important questions. The first question that this text answers is, who is this Jesus? It answers this question loud and clear. Jesus is the one God in the flesh who has come to give life. And in these very readings, we see that he has power even over death. These stories are meant to give us hope. They're meant to tell us the good news about who our God is, that certainly nothing is impossible for our God. We find that in Jesus, God's promises have come to fruition. God has come in the flesh, that in Jesus, the kingdom of God comes near. And when the kingdom of God comes near, everything can be changed. Transformation happens. Something to celebrate, is it not? And yet there's questions. Faith and healing, how does this happen? And so today I hope that we can live and dwell in these questions for a little while. Not comfortable space to be in. And yet important space for us to be in. You know, we look at our world around us and we see a world full of suffering and tragedy, don't we? And a question that we ask all the time is, why, God? Why? And we pray, God, do something. Do something. A few stories from my own life. Um, some of you know this because I've shared this, but it's been a while, and so many of you maybe do not. Um, when I was six weeks old, a newborn baby, my mom was a young mom, fairly newly married. She became a widow. My biological father died in an accident. It was actually a scuba diving accident. We don't know the whole story because my grandparents chose to not share the whole story. And that is because it's pretty certain that there were chemicals in my father's body that meant that the scuba diving didn't happen the way it should have happened. Okay. The result of that was a young mom with a newborn baby, widowed. Every now and then my mom lets me into what that time was like for her, you can imagine. And yet, life goes on. And God answers prayers. And in the end of the story is that um, 
I was raised by my father, a wonderful man, the only father I've ever known. And I have an incredible family, and I have extra grandparents. Life goes on, and God is faithful, even in the midst of suffering. The story that I really want to share with you today is the story of my cousin Jeff and his wife Lynn. And so even as we speak this morning, um, she is in the last days of her life. But let me give you a little background. Um, Jeff and Lynn uh, have been married now for, oh, I think 13 or 14 years. Uh, Lynn was married before, and so she has a daughter who's 19 or 20 who's in college right now. And Jeff and Lynn have had two daughters together, an um, eighth grader and I think a fifth grader. And uh, it wasn't too many years ago that Jeff, my cousin, uh, felt the call to go to seminary. And it was just a year and a half ago that he graduated from seminary to become a pastor. And uh, he got to his first call. He was at his church for about a week. And his wife got the diagnosis. Cancer. Now, some of you know um, Pastor Cooper, um, David Cooper and Sabina, um, Lynn has the same cancer that Sabina has. It's very serious. And in fact, um, Sabina Cooper has far outlived um, the, the original diagnosis that she received. Knowing that, we've been incredibly hopeful that Lynn's journey would follow a similar path. Um, but through all the treatment, um, through the bone marrow, uh, the transplants and things they did, uh, just uh, over Christmas time, they got the news that it wasn't working. It wasn't working. That there was probably a year or six months left. This was in December over Christmas. And so um, they went and got their oldest from college to come home to take a semester off to be with her mom during her last year or so. And then just last weekend, the news that there wasn't a year, there wasn't going to be six months, there was only days. She's gone into renal failure. Then the only way to give her more days is to just go live in the hospital for a while, and that's not how they want to do life. So now they're faced with this reality. Now, let's be clear. For the last year and a half, there's been a lot of prayers for Lynn to be healed. Not only in her family and in their church, but churches all over the place. Jeff being a pastor, he's got a lot of friends who are pastors. He's had a lot of people praying in a lot of places, praying for Lynn to be healed. And just as this woman in the crowd did to Jesus, they have pressed in close. They have come near to Jesus and pleaded for healing. And they've been waiting and looking and watching for signs of healing. And the healing they've been asking for doesn't seem to be happening. So how do we understand these things and what do we do with them? Well, we have choices to make, I think. And um, this week they made some really incredible choices. See, in their church they do something similar to what we do with Family Faith Night. They bring The church comes together for worship and some things and... Um, Lynn decided that she wanted to uh, tell their story. And so uh, they got the word out on, on Wednesday. I mean, she just found out last weekend, days to go. And so they said, we're getting everybody together and we're telling our story. And so the, the church gathered, the community gathered, and Wednesday night, for a couple of hours, they told their story. They cried a lot. They laughed. They worshiped. As a family, they led songs of praise to God. And they shared her story, their story. You see, her story is not about how or when she will die. That's not what her story is about. Her story is about God's faithfulness. 
God's faithfulness to her in this life and God's faithfulness to her through the valley of the shadow of death and into eternal life. They've chosen to press into Jesus, to cling to him for life, but not just this life, no, for the next life too. You see, the truth is, Jesus has made her well. Not in the way that they've been praying, though, or that many have been praying, but Jesus has made her well. But here's the really incredible part about their story and in the sharing of their story. You see, as they have shared their story, so many others have been made well. You see, our God works in incredible ways in our lives all the time. And the reality is, God is healing us day after day. You see, Lynn looks back on her life and the story that she wanted to tell is all the ways that God has been healing her every step of the way. That's the story that she wanted to tell. That in fact, God is not only her savior, but her healer. And so in sharing their story, healing power of Jesus was felt in a powerful way in the lives of many, many people. Actually, just this morning, um, I shared to Facebook uh, a post that my cousin had made, and I encourage you to read that. Um, And if you're one of those people that's not on Facebook, call the office. We can print it off for you, um, and you can read it. But um, my cousin's been writing about this journey. And um, some really powerful words this morning about how they view this. I think um, these stories raise for us important questions, don't they? They raise for us important questions about life and about death. How we view those things. And where we place our hope and our trust. For me, I'm reminded of the value of every single day. Because I don't know that I will be here tomorrow. And you know what we so often forget? Jesus never promised me tomorrow. He never once promised me today or tomorrow or the day after that. He never promised me those things. The promise he made to me is that he would be with me always in life and in death. That's the promise he made. And yet, don't we take each day for granted? We assume that we should have 70 or 80 or whatever it is because that's somehow owed to us. What if we lived each day as if it was a surprise that that it was given to us? What if we lived each day as nothing but a gift with opportunity to help others be made well? You see, that's what Jeff and Lynn have chosen. That in her final days, what is she going to do? She's going to help others be made well. My friends, I don't know why some people get miracles and some people don't. But I'm also aware that God works miracles in my life every single day. God is at work in you, healing you in all sorts of important ways every single day. The brokenness in our lives, the ways that we turn our back on God, that we break our relationship with God and the spirit comes in and repairs those things. The ways that we harm each other, that we create brokenness, God comes in and gives new life. Jeff and Lynn have been through some tremendous things in their lives. And their story is about a God who is faithful, a God who heals. And I think that's our story too. And so my friends, it's my hope that you and I can press into Jesus. That each day we can draw near, that we can grab onto him to receive his healing power. And that we too will hear those words from Jesus, your faith has made you well. 
faith has made you well. Our God is a God of love, a God of hope, a God of life. And so today, we press in to Jesus. Let us pray. Oh, gracious God, we so easily take for granted each breath we take, each moment we have with the people you bless us with. We so easily assume that so much is owed to us. Lord, we pray this day that you help us to receive every day as a gift from you, that you help us to see the miracle in each day we are given. We pray that you help us to press into you, to draw near to you. And we ask you to open our eyes to see the miracles that you do in our lives each and every day. God, today I thank you for walking with Jeff and Lynn in this dark valley. I thank you, Lord, for giving them hope and peace and power in this difficult time. I thank you for the courage you've given them to share their journey with others. And I pray you give us that same courage. Lord, we pray that you help us to see all the ways that you make us well. And may we be a part of helping others to be made well in you. In Jesus' name, we pray these things. Amen.